Hey guys, so in this video we're talking about how to balance redox reactions. Redox reactions are, um, they have a, a special method for balancing because not only do we have to make sure that the mass is balanced, having the same number of atoms of each element on both sides of the arrow, but we also have to make sure that the charge is balanced and that can make it a little challenging sometimes. But if you follow this method, no problem. So right here guys, these are the steps to balance um, a redox reaction. Um, write them down, put them on your card, um, you'll need to use them. Um, um, I'm, I'll go through each of these, we'll do two examples and I'll, I'll explain what each of these means. But uh, one thing to um, look for is, you, and no matter what the redox reaction is, we do steps one through seven. We only do steps eight and nine if the reaction is occurring in a basic solution. Um, the way you know that it occurs in a basic solution is either you're told so in the problem, or you see one of the reactants or products is, is a base, you know, some, like some hydroxide or something. Um, if it's not in basic solution, it'll be acidic solution, and then we just do steps one through seven. So let's start. Um, so we want to balance the, um, this reaction here, which is a redox reaction, using the half reaction method. That's the name for this, this method, is the half reaction method. Um, and you're told it occurs in acidic solution. All right, so let's start out with step number one. Step number one is to write the what are called the oxidation half reaction, oxidation and reduction half reactions separately. What that is is the oxidation half reaction. Um, it's just the oxidation half of the reaction. Um, the way you find that, the way you write that down, is you first. This is the first step. You have to calculate the oxidation numbers. So we learned how to do that. Um, for all the, the elements in the, the reaction, and I've done this. I, so I've got a plus six oxidation state for chromium, negative two for oxygen, plus three for carbon, negative two for oxygen, and on the right hand side of the arrow, plus three for chromium, plus four for carbon, and minus two for oxygen. So to find the oxidation half reaction, you just look for the species that's being oxidized. I mean, you know, so the oxidation number becomes more positive or less negative. And here, that's going to be carbon, because it's going from a plus 3 to a plus 4. And wherever that element appears on both sides of the arrow, you write that species down on, you know, for the half reaction. So this is the oxalate ion. Um, there's a carbon. Um, it appears in carbon dioxide on the right, so we put carbon dioxide down here. And now this is the unbalanced oxidation half reaction. We do the same thing for the reduction half reaction. This is the species that's being reduced. So we see what's being reduced. In this case, chromium is going from a plus six on the left to plus three on the right. Less positive, more negative, it's being reduced. So we write dichromate on the left, arrow, chromium three on the right. That's the unbalanced um, reduction half reaction. That's step one. Step two, we balance the number of all the atoms except for oxygen and hydrogen in both re half reactions. And this is just like we've been doing at this point. So because um, we had one carbon here from the carbon dioxide and two from the oxalate, I put a two in front of the carbon dioxide to balance the carbons. Remember, we're leaving the oxygens and hydrogens for later. With the, um, the reduction half reaction, we had two chromiums on the left, one on the right, so I put a two there. That's step two. Now. Step three, balance half reactions for oxygen only by adding water for every oxygen that you need. So we're gonna make sure we have the same number of oxygens on both sides of the arrow by adding a water molecule for every oxygen we need to add. So up here, we have four oxygens on the left um, and four on the right. So it's balanced, we don't have to do anything with water. It's easy, right? But on the, the reduction half reaction, we have seven oxygens on the left, zero on the right. We need seven oxygens on the right, so we add seven waters, and that's what I'm showing right here. And that's step three. Step four, now we balance the half reactions for hydrogen by adding an H plus, a proton, for every hydrogen that you need. So again, in the top half reaction, um, there are no hydrogens, so it's already done. Let's go back here for a minute. But in the bottom half reaction, we have seven times two is 14 hydrogens on the right, None on, the, none on the left, so we have to add 14 hydrogens on the left. And that's what I'm doing right here. That's where that 14 H plus comes from. And that's step four. Step five, balance the charge in both half reactions with electrons. So electrons carry negative charges. So what you do is you, count, you add up all the charges on both sides 
and make sure that you have the same charge. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's the same on both sides of the arrow. And the only tool you have to do that is to add electrons on one side or the other. So up here, we have two negative charges on the left, none on the right. So I'm gonna add two electrons on the right-hand side of the oxidation half reaction. And now it's balanced for charge for now. And the bottom half reaction, we have 14 positives and two negatives on the left. That's 12 positives. On the right, we have six positives. Well, we have more. We have 12 positives on the left, six positives on the right. The only way we can make those equal is to add six electrons, six negative charges on the left. So when we do that, now we have um, six positive charges on the left, six positive charges on the right. It's balanced for charge. That's the way. Guys, be careful with this 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 one right here. Um, so that is step five. Step six says make the number of electrons in both half reactions the same by multiplying through the whole half reaction by some integer. Um, well, we add two electrons in the oxidation half reaction and six in the reduction half reaction. The least common multiple of two and six is six. So we're going to multiply the top half reaction, the oxidation half reaction, three by three. And that gives us three oxalates going to six carbon dioxides and six electrons. And we don't touch the bottom because in this case, um, now they're equal. Right? So that's step six. And finally, for this one, step seven, add the two half reactions. So when you guys add any chemical reactions, re-equations, um, anything that appears both on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the arrow cancels out. So we used to add them, add them just like algebra, right? So we have three oxalates, three oxalates, 14 hydrogens, 14 hydrogens, now the six electrons cancel, right? There's six on the left here, six on the right here. Those cancel, and they have to. We, the, last, the previous step, we just ensured that that's going to happen. Um, dichromate here, so that's the left-hand side of the arrow. Um, six carbon dioxides, two chromium threes, and seven waters. Um, one, um, so we're done, but we should always um, double-check ourselves. So what you do now is just make sure that you have the same number of atoms of each element on both sides and the charge is the same on both sides. So what you do is just real easy. On the left there's 14 hydrogens. Over here, seven times two is 14. Hydrogen's good. Carbons, three times two is six on the left. Six times one is six on the right. That's good. Oxygens, three times four is 12. Plus seven is 19 oxygens on the left. Six times two is 12 plus seven is 19 oxygens on the right. And finally, chromium, there's two on the left, two on the right, so the mass is balanced, but now we have to check the charge too. So on the left, we have 14 positives, right? 14 times one is 14, six negatives, so that's eight positives, and then two negatives, that leaves us um, six positive charges on the left. Over here, we have two times three is six positives on the right, yes. Mass is balanced, charge is balanced. We cannot reduce these numbers by anything. These are the smallest whole number so that will balance the equation. We're done. Easy as that, right? Let's do, a, um, do one that's in basic solution now. So um, it says balance the following reaction by the half reaction method, um, and it occurs in basic solution. So you're told it's basic solution. So I'm not going to write out the steps because you've, you've seen me, you know, you've seen the steps now. Now I'm just going to show you how, what we get when we do each step until we get to steps eight and nine. So this is what we want to balance. First thing is we write the half reactions. So it ends up, up that carbon is being oxidized here. Um, and this is the oxidation half reaction. Um, manganese is being reduced here. Um, and yeah, so it's the, so this is a reduction half reaction. Um, step two, balance everything except for oxygen and hydrogen. Well, in this case, everything's already balanced. One carbon on each side, one nitrogen on each side, one manganese on each side. All right, so that was easy. Step three, now we're going to do the oxygens with water. So we had one oxygen on the right, none on the left, so we added one water here. Um, in the reduction half reaction, we had four oxygens on the left and two on the right, so I added two waters to the right side of the equation. That's, that's step three. Step four, we're going to balance the hydrogens with H+. Plus. Well, up here I have two hydrogens on the left, none on the right, so I add two H pluses. On the bottom, I have two times two is four hydrogens on the right, 
none on the left, so I have four H pluses on the left. That's step four. Step five says balance the charge with electrons. Well, before I had the electrons, I had one negative on the left here, two positives plus one negative is one positive on the right. So if I add two electrons here, I'll have one negative on the right, one negative on the left. And be careful, that's a step, by the way, that people most often get, get messed up on. Um, the reduction half reaction. I have four positives plus a negative one is three positives on the left, none on the right. So if I add three electrons on the left, that charge will be balanced here. Step six, make the number of electrons the same. Well, the least common multiple of two and three is six, so I'm going to multiply through the oxidation half reaction by three, reduction half reaction by two, and that'll do it. So the result of that is what I have here. Three cyanides, three waters, um, three cyanates, six hydrogens, and six electrons. In the bottom, six electrons, eight hydrogens, two manganates, two manganese four oxides, and four waters. All right, so there we go, that's step six. Step seven, add the two half reactions. So well, let's look at this. So in the oxidation half reaction, I had three waters and the reduction of four. These three cancel out three of these, leaving one water behind. So I'm going to end up with one water on the right. Um, three cyanides on the left. The, high, the electrons cancel, of course. Now with the hydrogens, I have six on the right-hand side of the oxidation half fraction, eight on the left. So these six cancel with six of these, leaving two hydrogens. And then I have two magnates. Um, and everything else just kind of carries down. Okay, so now if this were in acidic solution, I'd be done, but it's not. This is in basic solution, and we know that in basic solution, we're not going to have hydrogen ions floating around. So what we do is now step eight. For every hydrogen ion that we have, we add that number of hydroxides on both sides of the arrow. So because we have two H pluses here, we're going to add two hydroxides on the left, two on the right. Now, when you add H plus to no H minus, it always makes H2O. So this gives us two H2Os here and we just add the two hydroxides there. And then finally, step, uh, step nine says cancel out any waters that cancel. So if we look at this, we have two waters here, one here, this one's gonna cancel out one of these. And we have one water left on the left, and now we have our balanced redox reaction. Checking the mass, we have three carbons on the left, three carbons on the right. Three nitrogens on the left, three nitrogens on the left, on the right. We have two hydrogens on the left, two hydrogens on the right. Two manganese on the left, two manganese on the right. Um, oxygens, we have eight plus one is nine on the left. Three, four is seven, plus two is nine on the right. Okay, mass is balanced. Checking the charge. We have three times one is three negatives, plus two negatives is five negatives on the left. Three negatives plus two negatives is five negatives on the right. That's it, we're done. Now let me just show you real quick, before we stop guys, let me show you something real quick, um, a, a check um, on, on yourself. So when you're um, in doing step, was it step five, okay? When you're adding the electrons to balance the charge, the oxidation half reaction always has to have the electrons end up on the right hand side of the arrow because that's showing that electrons are being lost, and that's what oxidation is. And the reduction half reaction must always end up with the electrons on the left side of the arrow because that's showing that electrons are being gained, and that's what reduction is. Well, that's all there is to that, guys.